Well, <laughs> Sky, it is genuinely a pleasure to have you here on the stream. Thank you very much for joining us here today. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for having me. And just a, a comment from Becca here saying, Not nice kitchen. That does look like a good, like, you know, good, oh. like, open space there. Yeah, I'm liking it, man. Yeah, we have a, a converted church here out in southern Ontario. So. Oh, what? It's your home? Yeah. No. So it's our home, it's our studio, it's our video studio. Holy Our crap. living room's a big jam space. And if anyone's interested, there's a home tour at Napalm Records' YouTube channel. <laughs> now, did you buy the the church? Was it kind of like derelict and you had to do it all up? Or is it kind of like ready to be a home? Like, like how did that happen? Like, yeah, tell me about that. Yeah, I'm just so intrigued. Yeah, so we actually, we rented this place from the guy who took it from the the kind of condemned old building that no one was using and yeah. to a daycare. And so he, uh, the daycare business wasn't working out. So he rented it out to us. And then a few years in, he was like, okay, I'm going to sell this thing, but I wanted to give you guys first dibs since you've been living here. And we kind of became a little bit of friends. And so, yeah, he hooked, hooked us up with a good price and we couldn't refuse. So yeah, we've been living here for like the last like, seven eight years now nice yeah. nice that must have been a great project to, to well great when she finished it not probably not so great when you're you know digging out roots from the, the from the floors and all that kind of stuff but that must have been <laughs> well, that must have been a great you know great to work on oh well he did most of the work adam did most of the work before we came in all we had to do is take out a few of the little toilets and sinks from the daycare that was here before us um and then upstairs is still unfinished so we still have a lot of work to do upstairs and slowly but surely building building her out but yeah it's it's definitely got its own quirks we get bats in the belfry oh and wow they wow. fly in and i mean it's got like haunted vibes all i i i, I don't believe it goes but uh, but it's one of those where like if i did like that would have that great sort of haunting feel to it. it's like it's an old church that's got bats in it like <laughs> yeah, the first the first time i took a bath i swear i saw satan in the bathtub but oh, it was just no. <laughs> it was just the reflection of the candle onto my loofah onto the the knob of my bath and it was just you know i could justify it but yeah it was kind of like i took a picture it was like see <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the brain can play mad tricks on us. So the last time I saw Sumo Psych, I was going back through the 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 year of broken dreams that was last year, and you know, and and, and look at it. Oh God, when was when was that gig? And the last time I saw you, uh, saw the band was at Rebellion in Manchester. It was November 2020, and you know, it was before the words like COVID had even like come into like our like language. You know, even at that point. It was really, the thing is, though, I really remember about that gig. It was like a Tuesday or Wednesday night, but it was packed. And I was so taken back about how dedicated your your fans were for, for, for that show. Um, that yeah, must have been your last UK tour, right? Yeah, man. I love Rebellion. That was, I always love coming to her in UK. It's always such a good time. And uh, yeah, love those packed little venues. It's so much fun. So yeah, it's it's been a while since we've been doing that. So I miss it like crazy. Just thinking about it makes me like, all sad. <laughs> I know, I know. I, I try not to talk too much about it. Now, we'll come on to it a little, a little bit later because I do think there is some cause for optimism, but yeah, there's certainly a lot of caveats. Um, but, you know, I was kind of thinking, because that was the, I think it was the second time that I saw Sumo Psycho. The other time was a download 2018 or 19. I can't quite remember the last year. So That's sure, 19, but, uh, yeah. 19. And and it, it, it kind of feels like, you know, even though your new album is it's, it's three years, or sorry, it's, it's, it's your third album, it feels like it's been a very steady build for Sumo Psycho, even as you're approaching album three. Does it feel like that from yourselves? Because not, not many bands get to like, you know, what, 10 years in and are hitting album three. It's more like album six at that kind of point. Right. Yeah. For us, we started off like just releasing singles and that's the way we wanted to do it. Just like single music video, single music video. But then mm. the, the pressure put got put too much on our shoulders to actually do a full length. So we ended up kind of going into the record cycle, but it does feel like a steady build, although it does feel like the last year has been a weird year for us and everybody. Obviously, it was the first year in 10 years that we never released one song. Right, was last right. year. We usually it will at least put out like an acoustic record or do like a single here and there to try to like, you know, just keep the momentum going. But last year was just a weird, weird, weird year. So it feels it feels really good now that we're kind of putting out a lot more material and getting more into like a focused 
mind frame because for a long time in in this pandemic, I was just totally like, what's going on? I just I couldn't even focus on trying to do music or be creative yeah. or make videos because I was just so lost. Like and- a rabbit in the headlight situation. Yeah, like, oh, exactly. Oh, so, right. so <laughs> I yeah, because I, I was wondering actually whether the band would have benefited from the pandemic. Because I think, although largely it's it's extremely damaging for, for bands and we know the reasons why, but I, I think some bands have managed to make it work for them in some ways. Yeah, I think we were prepared more than most in a weird way because we are so self-sufficient with like a home studio. Mm. We direct and edit our own videos in-house. So it really made it kind of, I guess, easier than some other situations where people don't have the resources or or time to, to do those types of things. I also run a lot of our online store from our house. So mm-hmm. it just kept things rolling and we were able to still like, you know, keep – our feet somewhat on the ground. Thank God for our awesome fans out there, like buying my calendar last year and buying some of our merch launches, our home collection and things like that. We put out in the meantime, it really just like literally kept us going. So we were able to, you know, keep uh, working on the music behind the scenes, but Mm -hmm. yeah, we're, we're lucky in a certain sense that we've, we've kind of uh, been able to use all of our skills over the years to kind of create this little, kind of well-oiled machine that really only takes a a couple of us to make happen so Mm -hmm. it's worked out better than most I feel bad so bad for a lot of bands venues to just if I could say anything quickly is to just check on your local venue check on your local favorite band and maybe buy some merch today or you know don't yes and and, and direct from the band as well we're having a conversation about that earlier with with how the charts work and stuff like that but we won't go over that now but uh yeah taking the the pandemic out of the equation um what, what would you say has sort of been like the biggest challenges uh, for Sumo Psycho over the, the sort of the past 10 years from from where the band was at in sort of 2011 to, to where you are now? Yeah, um, lots of different challenges to overcome. I think just, you know, when you're presented with uh, opportunities, sometimes uh, it almost makes it harder because mm. now you're picking between different things that you need to do, like your time's a lot more limited and the pressure's on a lot more. So I think for me, I'm such a control freak that the last like the the last few months releasing all these singles back to back month after month and and looking after so much of of what we do because I don't have the resources right now to like hire on more people or mm. kind of go out and outsource a lot of this stuff. Um, I've I've been like literally living on all I've been all pulling all nighters like the last <laughs> the right, last two yeah. months I've been so busy it's insane and uh try to keep your sanity in amongst you know being super busy the pandemic not seeing people like it it can get kind of overwhelming to a certain extent so mm-hmm. for us like we've been super lucky we have such an awesome loyal group of fans that have really like I said carried us through in most situations without them you know showing up to the shows and proving that you know sumo psycho is presence to be reckoned with like there's so many times you wouldn't even have been afforded the chances so um it really does uh, mean a lot to us you got the a fans dog sorry there. i'm distracted by the dog uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's all good um but yeah um yeah for us like you know we're constantly trying to push ourselves and learn and uh you know we're still like i said a small little group matt produces most of the stuff um we do all our own music videos so to try to keep up with you know constantly pushing ourselves to be better at what we do to kind of live up to you know some of the cool stuff we see out there we want to you know we keep pushing ourselves to be better and better and better and and uh step up to the plate but yeah this last few months have been crazy we've been doing music videos every month Usually it takes me like a few months to do and I've been doing one a month. So it's been ins- it's been pretty mm, insane. Mm. And you mentioned earlier about sometimes it could be a bit more difficult when you've got different opportunities here and there. You've got to maybe pick between them. And if yeah. I'm right, your first ever gig, Assume Psycho, was with Hollywood Undead. Yeah, How it was. Like, yeah. Like, that's, as far as first gigs go, that's that's pretty good. <laughs> for a first, <laughs> yeah, how did, how did it was happen? actually, we, we had four days notice for that show. Wow. So 
Um, so Matt had a friend who was a promoter in Toronto who he'd worked with with previous bands and things. And uh, Matt, I think recently had just sent him like a demo of ours and been like, hey, we're, we're I'm starting this new project called Sumo Psycho. So I guess it was like right fresh on his desk. And the other band that was supposed to open for Hollywood and Dead couldn't make it across the U.S. Canadian border. Right, so they right. were kind of a last minute kind of we need to fill the spot. And we were kind of just sitting on his desk at the right place, right time, I guess, and gave us a call and said, would you be able to scramble your guys together and do a show in four days? And it was our first show we'd ever played. And it was awesome, though. It was like a pretty good first show. But then Matt, unfortunately, uh, caught one of the band members' hands in a door. He was opening the door. (laughs) Their guy was coming through and they like slammed it and his hand got all crushed. So the whole show we were like just a uh, uh, apologizing the whole time. I've got this image of uh, Back to the Future in my mind and, you, you know, one, yeah. Matt's gaffing to go up singing Earth Angel because <laughs> he's hurt his hand, man. <laughs> yeah, totally. So, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, that was, it was a fun night, though. It's good, good show. And it was kind of cool, like you said, to be in front of, like, you know, a crowd of a few thousand for our first show that usually doesn't happen with most bands. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Certainly, yeah, not for, not for a first gig. But you mentioned as well about your loyal fans earlier and that's definitely something that struck me when i went to your gig at rebellion in manchester in november 2020 was that something that was was quite sort of inherent like from the get-go with sumo psycho was this sort of quite a deep connection from from the early days like from where from where you are now because i was struck by how dedicated your fans were yeah i'd like to think there's been you know a lot of moments that we've tried to create those relationships you know more than just you know, just uh, a, a music and the listener. It's, you know, a, a lot of hanging out after gigs. We usually, you know, are at the merch table chatting with people and we're online trying to answer back to everyone's comments and trying to be social. So we're we're a very involved band with our fans. We love, uh, we love considering them more like a big family than necessarily that like one-way relationship where I'm just, you know, making music and they're just like listening to it. It's, mm. they give back some, to us just as much and um there's been so many examples of that i could just go off on all the cool things that we've been able to experience because of our our awesome fans but yeah it, it does feel like a two-way relationship in many senses so it's it's great it's, it's cool to uh to me to always remember that every single like you know like on social media is a real person behind that and to be really uh, mindful and grateful for the fact that people are caring what I have to say or caring about our music, you know, and really remembering that it's, it's imp- important to give back. Important and- point to remember what you said there that, you know, every single like on social media is, is, is a person for the most part, there is a few bots, but, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, but we know that, way. but yeah, um, because I think that is something that you, you, you can forget as a band, particularly as your social media presence might get big and you put out a photo on, you know, Twitter and Insta and there's thousands of likes and you just go, Oh, it's just numbers. But it's like, no, no, no like, those are real people. Those are human beings behind that. It's not just an algorithm. Yeah, a hundred percent. And I think that that, if I had to give advice to any up and coming bands, I think sometimes it, there is so much of a focus of like trying to impress the industry about how many hits you have here or how many likes or how many streams. But if you just focus on making those relationships with fans one by one and think of them as people like those those relationships will last you years. I mean, we're proof of that, that, you know, hanging out at a show where there's 30 people and we made sure to shake everyone's hand who came and, and thank them for being part of it, that, you know, that passed on and kind of grew. Um, and so, and those, those people have been the first in line when we played shows like download, you know, hanging mm. out at the front and you, you notice that those people have been with you supporting you through all these, all these moments, because, um, you know, of that relationship of having that closer, closer. And I can imagine That's now as things that, you know, are taken off a bit, they, they definitely seem like they are like, it must feel like everyone's in the same boat together, like everyone driving forward and like, and everyone's a part of that. Yeah, that's what I I really do love that sense of community and feeling like uh like we're all yeah moving through this crazy industry together and mm. you know even we have a, a you know a Facebook kind of group with all of our our fans and you know I'm always kind of feeding them stuff to be like hey you know we're up f- for this you know uh placement on this radio station or here there they'll come yeah. in and they'll you know 
swarm in and and help defend our name if anyone's you know given us bad uh, press. Well, something someone said <laughs> someone something bad about you on the internet. No, get over. <laughs> yeah. No, it's been uh, it's been interesting too. You know, casting a wider net uh, now that we're working with Napalm Records. It, you know, we definitely are getting a hu- a different audience. I guess you could say being exposed to our music. So it's been kind of interesting seeing the different reactions and kind of the polarizing effect, I guess we're having on some people with yeah. likes and, and hating how... people passionately hating us. Yeah, <laughs> well, how, is, how is that being? So obviously, yeah, Napalm Records are huge metal for, for, for rock and uh, for rock and metal. And previously, perhaps, yeah, you were playing more to of your own crowd, maybe reaching a few new fans in here here and there, but all of a sudden, this is now like, boom, you, you know, right, you're into a, a whole group of new people who have never heard of you before, and all of a sudden it's like, oh, crap, yeah, we're not just in front of our own fans anymore. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a little bit of a, a shock at the beginning, you know, where you are kind of used to a very supportive group of people who are cheering you on to, you know, getting a whole new vast race of opinions. And, you know, I've got thick skin. I've been in this business a long time. I know how it works. And um, mm. and thank goodness that they even want to talk about us because that helps, you know, helps the algorithms get out there so more people can check us out. But, you know, the way that we've thought about this moving forward with Napalm is we've always, you know, been open to growing our our kind of our family and we want to seek out those people that get what we do and are down with our crazy brand of rock and 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 metal and pop all fused together and in order to get to those people you're going to have to wade through you know some people that aren't going to be so stoked on it which Mm. is 100 percent fine yeah Uh, but it it has been kind of uh eye-opening too to just see you know how many people take so much uh i guess pleasure in putting other people down we all <laughs> yeah. we all know it's out there but until you're the one that they're saying everything about it do- it doesn't hit quite the same i guess mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. you know it's it i i find that now it's kind of getting quite amusing because uh to me it's it you know it feels a little closed-minded some of the misogynistic comments and you know very very kind of what we call like elitist where you're not allowed mm. into the club like no girls allowed or no people that wear this or sing you know slightly pop are allowed in this club you know and that kind of seems a bit closed minded it's the me. misogyny in, in particular harder you. to deal with because it's one thing for someone to bag on your band and say oh that's a shit song or like oh this band sucks or whatever but it's a different thing when it's misogyny that 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 must like yeah no a that's you know you don't realize how much of it is out there sometimes and then mm. you know you've got a little wake-up call and every now and again it happens um which sucks you know it's hard to change everyone's mind and as much as i want to comment back to people and be like yeah you're you got it all wrong or you're under false pretenses here you know making assumptions about you know who we are or how we've come to be where we are and things like that. I, you know, I'm kind of like, well, I want to educate you. That's not how this Mm. band came to be or whatever, but it is, it is tough when you see like, you know, hate on, on comments, but you know, for us, uh, we just got to, it's even proving more and more why we've got to do what we do do is to just, you know, put ourselves out there to be one more voice in the, in the sea of voices, you know, trying to show that, you know, we're capable of as much as the next person. And it doesn't matter, you know, who you are, what you look like, what sex, race, religion, whatever it is, you know, we're, we should all be welcoming more people into the heavy rock space, not closing people off from, from feeling welcome. Absolutely. You know? I, so- I, I, I couldn't agree more. And, and, and what, what would you say would be like the, the number one thing that we could do as individuals to be more welcoming or even to, to you know say if we come across misogyny like what do you think of the things we can do to sort of you know push yeah, back just, against that i think it's just speaking up you know um like at shows for instance there'll be there, there's tons of instances i could go through but you know where you see something where you're like okay that's not really cool that that guy you know i was crowd surfing through the the crowd and you know takes a little bit more of a groping yep. Yep. grab then should be appropriate and mm-hmm. instead of just letting it go like if you can speak up and be like dude that's not cool like you shouldn't be doing that like that those little moments just you don't realize that that person hasn't heard that from that many people and that's why they continue to act that way if mm. they were told by everyone in their life that what they're doing is kind of you know not really appropriate then maybe 
they, you know, socially would want to change, you know, hopefully you'd think so. So I just think speaking up and, you know, when you see it, call it out, it, it does help in a, in a small way. And just, I know I, I want to make our shows and spaces online, like feel more welcoming to people. So they don't feel like they're coming into some place where there's a lot of hate or judgy comments, things like that. I want, you know, I'm, I think it's also a little bit of a dated old fashioned fashioned way of thinking. So hopefully newer generations can be a little bit more open-minded. I'm, I'm hopeful for the I, future. I, I, me too. I think dialogue's good because I think sometimes when like you, I, 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 the internet in particular uh, and social is tricky because if you just shout at someone on, you know, who's an egg with a fucking bunch of numbers, it's like, well, they're, you yeah. know, they're just going to do <laughs> but, but actually, I, I, from what I can kind of see in my experience of it too, is actually the impact is like maybe when you say something to someone in your close circle of friends and go, oh, actually, dude, like, you know, you're my friend or whatever, but that's not cool and here's why like i feel like that kind of impact and you don't see it unfortunately because it happens you know at a bar or at a gig but but that to me i think is one way it really can hit home when it comes from someone who might be a bit closer to you true true i think it is tough to be you know completely uh you know, the person who kind of dampers the mood yeah, in a situation yeah. where it's like, hey, we're all having fun, you know, and I got to be the one to call somebody out. But I think if we can be more comfortable with those moments and to not always take complete offense and be open to bettering ourselves a little bit, and I think the world would be a better place, you know, if we're just, you know, can be mindful and not take personal offense to everything and be open to change. And I think that that's one thing that I felt the last few years, especially is really kind of trying to reflect on myself and my own actions on how to be a better just human being in general to people, ally to people. And, you know, it's, uh, it's something I think that luckily is, is being talked about more. So I just mm, want to continue. Mm. For me, a similar thing. I, I, the thing I've really uh, embraced over the past few years is the, uh, the, it's kind of like a liberty, not liberty, the freedom, uh, of, uh, of once you, you know, to be wrong, like, uh, you know, I, I feel like so many people that have desperately will do anything not to be wrong. It's like, Hey, I, Hey, I was wrong. Cool. Great. I learned something today. That's fine. And, and yeah, you know, and I can move on to the next thing. Um, so initiation, it's going to be out on the 7th of May and you know, it's an hour. We've talked to, you know, we talked about your fans today and how loyal they are. And really this is an album around them because you know, the, the, to my understanding, the album title is all about, you know, bringing people into the sumo cycle fold. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, this album has been, like I said, it's been a weird kind of, year and then on top of that we almost uh had like a lot of kind of stops and starts with this record we originally started a crowdfunding campaign in 2018 and then got like swamped with crazy touring and then that kind of got delayed when we got signed with napalm because then we wanted to re think what we were doing get the team involved and then of course the pandemic hit so then we went back to the drawing board again and kind of looked at our record another time and mm. went through and kind of nitpicked again at like do we want to write more songs do we want to change the the track listing here or there so it's been quite a process um but at the end of the day the the idea is that we just want to be the best band we can and we want to invite those people that are interested or would love us into the sumo psycho fam because it's a fun place to be if i do say so myself so yeah it is about inviting and there's also a double-edged sword too we have um kind of themes for each record with the art and the music videos and one of our themes for this record is these like four factions or psycho city gangs in our crazy comic book world of psycho city mm. and on our website you can take a quiz and see which one you belong to and that's kind of like an initiation oh, nice. in a way well. so yeah it's kind of like a fun we have this uh you could call it like this alternate universe that a lot of our artwork and and our videos live in and those characters kind of reappear sometimes and little stories little easter eggs i'll kind of drop throughout the the record campaign so it's been it's been kind of like a side project that i guess when you're a, i guess a sumo psycho super fan that you could pick up on and then once you're in that's it you're in <laughs> <laughs> yeah and what was that we were having uh, me and another presenter here at the station we're having a conversation a, a few weeks back about rock and metal club nights and how i'm not sure too sure what it's like in canada um but yeah you know, here in the uk a lot of club nights are still but this is pre-pandemic you know still mm -hmm. rocking at the sandman at you know one o'clock in the morning not a dig on at the sandman but hey you know it's like 25 years old or whatever uh yeah. and uh the, the the dj 
uh ted was saying you know what bystander now that's a tune i would happily drop two o'clock you know peak time uh you know right. at, at, at a club night um and that's the all about too is that you know it's just got this great it, it, it does have this like huge banger feel do you think that there's like a, a lack of of, of rock and metal songs like that that could just like fill a, a, a dance floor because there's not as many bands doing what you're doing that are just out for a good time oh i love that you uh you say in the context of like filling a dance floor because to me that's what we're all about is the party you know yeah. Simple psycho is like a party band and we we love the idea of being able to make people move to our music and that's something that i was inspired back in the day with uh band Skin Dread, most people know is one of my favorite bands because uh, as soon as I heard their music and the mashup of like the dance hall with with the heavy music was like this light bulb went off and said like, this is how I could pull off heavy music is making sure that it's fun and people can dance to it. And there's always in our lyrics, as much as we touch on as many subjects as we'd want to, whether, you know, spanning an entire spectrum, there's always a little bit of fun and hope in every single song that can, to me, create this like positive, fun vibe, I guess. And that's, I think what we want to kind of bring forth is just a little bit more fun in what can sometimes be a dark genre of music you know definitely definitely you mentioned skin dread and for those for many watching of course know who skin dread are but um we as a as a, as a radio station primordial radio uh we have an agm every year uh, it sounds very formal business like but it's we actually call the annual yeah. general mayhem uh and it's a bit of a business meeting about the radio <laughs> station and then there's the gig um and so we've got skin dread playing in september and nice. but we've had it booked for like two and a half years i think now because of the goddamn <laughs> pandemic about to push it back oh, so many times i don't know exactly what you say have you met benji by the way have you guys met yeah, before? He's, yeah he's done a feature for us oh, of course yes because he was on the track uh move mountains wasn't it yes yeah. yes absolutely. But i have yeah. the, i have the best the best story of meeting like w one of my idols you know people say don't meet your idols or don't meet yeah them because they'll, you build them up in your mind to be like these you know superhumans yes but yeah, when yeah. i when i met benji he just i met him at his house he just invited me in like showed me his like crazy bathroom it's like decked with, oh I've, like, I've heard so much about this house because and... it's in newport and everyone in, it, it's so yeah. he's literally called the king of newport lives on yes. you know essentially a council estate but he loves the area so much he stayed and he just did up his house and i've heard so much about benji's place yeah. and it's just it was just so cool to just kind of come into this unassuming neighborhood you know and just like knock on the door and just have this like larger than life personality like and he was so excited about the jacket. He had this cool new custom jacket he was going to wear in the music video. And the day we met was the day we were going to film uh, scenes for the music video. And uh, it just took us around Newport that evening, like literally just showed us around. Didn't have to go to all the trouble. But after the video shoot, he got us the location, hooked us up with like the camera kid. Because we, you know, coming from Canada, we didn't have any crew or anything we're like yeah, who do we yeah. know that could do like could film us locally like hooked us up with everything got us into the you know partying at night going through newport meeting you know going to see all his local hangout spots it was just like how cool could you possibly be to a band that's like just starting out you know just lucky enough to have you sing on their song and just to be so welcoming and so cool to just make us feel at home was was beyond me that i was like oh my god you're my favorite person in the world <laughs> Yeah, it was pretty cool to be uh, to be look up to someone that much and have them kind of like give you that that nod of approval back. It was pretty cool. Oh, amazing. Yeah, I feel like we're definitely yeah. going to have to get you and, and Skindred, you know, back on a, a, another bill, like, you know, as soon yeah. as we can. It's such, such a perfect bill. And, and, you know, we're talking here about sort of, I guess, in many ways, like the accessibility of, of rock and music. And you mentioned it can be a bit of a dark genre at times. And I think you have quite a, a unique viewpoint because obviously your background more in the pop and commercial world. Mm -hmm. Um. Do you think the rock and metal world is a bit too hostile sometimes to to change or you know uh you know things not quite fitting the mold of like this this is the only thing that could be rock and metal it it, it seems sometimes True. like we're a bit strident in, in in all of it yeah i i understand to a certain extent because i because matt in my band uh my guitarist he definitely a kind of has been an influence throughout my life with the idea of 
how important it is to, you know, stay true to the music ab above all else that you can get so in this industry, you can get swept up with so many different things. I mean, with social media, especially there's so many different ways you can kind of put yourself out there and kind of make a, a niche for yourself, whether it's, you know, Instagram photos, whether it's, you know, doing tons of covers on YouTube, there's all these different ways to kind of get out there. But he's always really been the one to really help me stay grounded. And like the music always needs to be the most important, no matter how you get caught up in music videos or all this stuff, like mm. just make sure we always like look at music. And he has a little bit of that uh music kind of uh like he likes what he likes and if it doesn't mm -hmm. hit a certain threshold of what he likes he's you know a little i'm a little bit more kind of like open-minded to stuff but i think i can understand a little bit of that almost like uh you know it's kind of like you're protecting your favorite band where you don't want anything to kind of come in and, and stop your scene because you love it so much but mm. at the same time change is good and growth is good and to to evolve uh, this genre to a place where it is a bit more mainstream, which is to me, I think a good thing for everybody when there's more people that are excited about a genre or more excited about heavy music. I think that's, it brings to me a lot new life and kind of other opportunities for people that are already in the space. Um, so to me, I feel like we need to be more accepting of people, you know, mixing genres or feeling like maybe they got one foot in the, you know, rock and metal pond, but one foot out somewhere else. That's totally cool. And to, uh, to not be close minded to those types of bands and, and, um, but yeah, I, I, I do believe that our music is challenging those people, especially right now. I, I am seeing it online that, mm. uh, you know, adding certain pop elements or certain ways, uh, you know, that I kind of, I, I like to approach music videos is a lot different than maybe what they're used to in this space. And so it's kind of interesting to see those, those ideas being challenged and what it really means to be a fan of the genre or, being in the genre how to kind of mold it in a way that the kind of newbies you know are looking at this this well I try yeah because for me trends, it's, you, know? you know i think it's 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 gateway not gatekeeping because uh, you know we're, we're not talking about Cannibal Corpse on Radio One here. You know, if Cannibal Corpse fans will be able to get to Cannibal Corpse when they want to, right? <laughs> um, but we're talking about getting people. I guess you know expanding the genre as a whole because uh, it's definitely one thing I uh, you know wonder about quite frequently is uh, you know bands like Linkin Park. It did so much to bring people into rock and metal. We gotta you gotta yeah. keep doing that o over the years. And yeah, I don't think the vast majority the vast majority of people start out with a death metal record. You know, they kind of ease in. It's like right, and we've got to figure out different ways to to do this so yeah it feels more yeah, like yeah like, gateway not gatekeeping yeah i think yeah definitely like building bridges and making people feel like i said like more just because they, they, they don't understand some of the deeper kind of cuts or the the harder death metal like you said bands doesn't mean that we shouldn't like be like well if you add a few heavy guitars and somebody likes that you know that's one step closer to them discovering those exactly let's things. start slow guys you know? we'll rope them yeah. in you know <laughs> so, yeah to me that's that's kind of like the the steps if you want people to get more into your kind of crazy you know super heavy dark metal bands they have to start somewhere and i i love building those bridges over and i like being you know it's for me the whole reason i started sumo psycho was because i did feel a little closed in creatively with feeling like i was had to you know write a song that was you know hook after hook just three minutes and 30 seconds couldn't include any like you know, thing too heavy. It couldn't include anything that was, so this you know, the, 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 the reverse problem, that. but in the pop world, you know, too structured. <laughs> yes. And so for me, Stumo Psycho was about building something where I had the freedom to experiment and try things and, and put myself into kind of maybe some songs that I don't even know if I'm, I'm pulling off, but I want to try it because to me as an artist, personally, I love, to be able to feel free to create whatever I want and not feeling constricted by genre or boundaries or whatever, whatever it is. So uh, that's kind of the reason why I started Simo Psycho is to kind of break those boundaries for myself. So it kind of makes sense that in, in some weird full circle way, when I hear people saying, oh, you can't break those rules, it's kind of like, 
Well, that's what I said. That's the whole reason behind the, the band, dick one. <laughs> 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 uh, oh, amazing. Uh, now, you know, obviously we talked about the pandemic and stuff like that. And yeah, there's so many different facets and all that sort of thing. But I'm sure you'll be so excited to get back on stage. Is there a feeling of optimism amongst amongst the bands that, yeah, you know, chosen tours will be a thing again in the not too distant future for, for yourselves? I think so. I mean, we're in the behind the scenes planning stages of trying to get to get things going by the end of the year, which would be awesome. But unfortunately, right now in Ontario, where we live, we've just been put in one of our harshest lockdowns yet. Where oh, I'm even, so sorry to hear that because we, we had the, a similar thing here in Manchester where like the rest of the country wasn't on lockdown. But here in Manchester, we were. And uh, yeah, yeah, it sucks. So, yeah, I'm sorry to hear yeah, that. And it's, um, it, it is really sad right now. There are a, a ton of cases kind of popping up in, in, in southern Ontario, unfortunately. And uh, it, it even got to the point now where it's the la- last press release that came out from Uh, our premier even mentioned no live streaming uh like for bands because i don't i don't know if that was an issue that some some type of outbreak happened when someone was trying to do a live stream with their band at like an empty concert venue with a few camera guys or whatever it was but i was like surprised to see that that was specifically mentioned in the things that you're not supposed to do yeah um but yeah it's 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 pretty insane right now like uh, they even had uh like they were trying to like close the highways and stuff like it's i think we have the strictest rules right now in north america where we live so it's in, it's kind of insane right now it feels like this is just not ending it's crazy but i still understand like logically i know we're mm-hmm. starting to get more vaccines out there we're starting to get more people vaccinated we are getting you know as a as a world the cases are slowly starting to decline so yeah, it's just it's hard to always Head stay optimistic. Head hard, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It's this it's the Corona coaster as we call it. You know, up and down and up and down and yeah. yeah I don't. Know, I'm I'm ready to get off that damn coaster. <laughs> I never like roller coasters anyway. <laughs> yeah. It's so crazy though. I just keep thinking about the future and how we'll all be referencing this time of like, oh right, that was th- oh yeah, that was when we were in COVID. So obviously nothing happened then. Yeah, it's it's gonna be a very. Years, it's gonna be going to be weird in the future everyone will have their moment even like kids in high school i think about all the time like having like a full like year just not being like a normal year just like disrupting their whole lives or people trying to you know get out of college and start their lives or it's just it affects so many people in so many ways you don't even understand it's crazy but yeah here we are just trying to keep you know some type i've had my own existential crises of what i'm doing with myself <laughs> <in this> thing, <laughs> but i i feel like at the end of the day i think trying to bring any type of creativity and art and and joy to people's lives some distractions as much as it can be trivial i think it can help in more bigger ways than we we think sometimes you know so i try to try to keep myself in as much of a positive attitude as I can. Oh, well, that that is amazing. And, and you do an incredible job. And I've no doubt that so many Super Psycho fans, many in the comments here, here today, uh, will, will be agreeing with that. And yeah, just so thankful there's a new album, you know, to keep them distracted and keep them going through it all. And not far now. So yeah, 7th of May, few weeks off. And then yeah, all yeah. being well, you know, let's hope that things keep going in the right direction. And maybe next year, be able to get up to the UK and be able to, to, to see you live again. God, yeah. Um, fuck, I can't yeah, wait. Awesome. <laughs> it's going to be so good. Me too. I'm so, so good. excited for that first show. Oh, oh, God. Really yeah, yeah. That, that's it's gonna that's going to be a surreal feeling for you, like that first time you're on stage. God, that's going to be something. Um, Sky, this has been an absolute pleasure uh, to speak today. Stay safe. Uh, obviously, yeah, in the local lockdown and stuff like that. So, yeah, stay safe. And I hope res- uh, those restrictions come off soon in case they start coming down. And uh, wish you all the best for the uh, for the album release on the on the 7th of May. Oh, thank you so much. It was great talking to you. I really appreciate the support and spreading the word. And I know I've seen you guys uh, spinning the track. So we do really appreciate the hearing. Oh, so yeah, Bystander and the others are getting there too. But Bystander in particular, so fans get to, our listeners get to vote on the songs uh, here at the station. And Bystander was like one of the highest rated uh, so far this year. Uh, which oh, was awesome. uh, and and it's you know that's just the listeners voting on that you know it's not down to that's me great. um so yeah awesome. it's been getting such a great response so yeah uh sky thank you so much again and uh, yeah look forward to speaking to you again hopefully you know maybe uh in in person next time which would be amazing that'd be great awesome, awesome. take care sky, thank you so much bye 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 bye